Welcome to RideQ for Distance Learning. As we are aware that many schools and school systems will be adjusting to more online and remote learning, we want to show you how RideQ can not only help keep your workflow smooth, but even streamline it a bit. RideQ is a Chrome extension for Google Docs that enables teachers to more easily assess student writing and provide feedback. In a time where much of our work will be done online, RideQ can be of considerable assistance. To get the extension, search for RideQ in the Chrome Store and add it to your browser. You will see the logo in the upper right-hand corner of your browser, and when you open a Google Doc, you will see a green check mark to let you know the extension is active. RideQ does not require you to register to begin using it, but it will require you to register in order to save a score or track progress after your first assessment. For many users, RideQ will default to the student view. To switch to the teacher view, Maximize the RideQ meter, click on the menu in the upper left, and click on I am a teacher. Please note that students do not have the option to switch between views, only teachers do. RideQ will take a moment to switch over, and when it does, you will see the sidebar on the right. Because I have scored this doc earlier, I will click Rescore before I open the sidebar. Most of you will probably not have to do this, and can just click on the arrow to show sidebar. When you do, you will see the student's name at the top, followed by options to select their grade and rubric. In the document itself, you will see spelling errors underlined in yellow, grammar in pink, and punctuation in purple. To add or change any of the errors, simply click on the word and make your choice in the drop-down menu. Any changes you make will be updated automatically in the sidebar. Spelling errors also include the option to ignore all, so you don't have to repeatedly make that choice. Taking a look at the other metrics, word count is fairly self-explanatory. Vocabulary age is actually a measure of word acquisition. Words that have an error associated with them won't be counted, but the age shown otherwise is the 95th percentile of the unique words in the document. Please feel free to contact us if you have more questions surrounding the algorithm for that measurement. Below that, time on task measures the time spent engaged with the document. Only time spent actually writing or editing will count in time on task. If a document is open but not being actively used, that time won't count. Once you look over all of that information, it's time to move on to the rubric. Clicking the rubric drop-down menu will give you the option to skip the rubric or choose one of our built-in rubrics or a rubric you have made in the dashboard, which I'll explain later in the video. For our purposes here, I will select the narrative option. Clicking through the rubrics is possibly my favorite time-saving piece of RiQ. As both an ELA and history teacher, filling out rubrics by hand and then doing the math to get a score was one of my least favorite activities. With RideQ, I'm through the whole process in just a few clicks. Our built-in rubrics have four indicators and four grade and criteria levels. To see what any of the criteria levels are, click on the plus sign to expand it out. Once you make a choice in one area, RideQ will forward you to the next until you have finished the entire thing. For our purposes, I will make a few quick selections before clicking continue at the bottom of the extension to move on to the feedback screen. On the feedback screen, I will enter any written feedback in the text box. Below that is the RiQ score. The RiQ score is a 0 to 400 metric we have developed that gives you and your students an idea of how their writing measures up to other students of the same grade. The RiQ score uses the four data points we've discussed. Word count, how much they wrote. Accuracy, how accurate it is based on correct word sequence vocabulary maturity, and time on task, which measures their engagement with the document. Though the RiQ score often correlates strongly to a given rubric score, it is not meant to be a grade replacement. Rather, it is a metric to be monitored over time to track trends in student writing progress. The RiQ score for this document is low because there are lots of errors, intentionally I would like to point out, and the time on task is now incredibly high for a short piece of writing. The national norms for RiQ scores are in the dashboard and provide more context for its meaning. We will look at those in the dashboard in a few minutes. Scrolling down, we see the rubric score with visual gauges for each indicator and level of achievement. Once I have checked over all the scoring and feedback, 
I will save the score and then insert the feedback image into the document itself. This is what the student will see the next time they open the document. From here, we will jump to the dashboard by directing the browser to ryq.texthelp.com. If you are asked to log in, be sure to do so with the same Google account that you use to register for the RyQ extension. The front page of the dashboard is your classrooms page where you can compare data and metrics among classes. If you are using Google Classroom, you can import your classes and the class lists will auto populate. If you're not using Google Classroom, you can create custom classes by clicking on the button and adding students manually. Please note that you will not be able to add a student to a classroom until you have assessed at least one of their docs through RyQ. Clicking on View Class for any of the classes will bring you to a student list. Of note for teachers monitoring distance learning, the total number of words written and the time on task will both give you an idea of how much actual effort students are putting in from home. Clicking on a student's name will bring you to their individual dashboard. The first things you notice here are the fuel gauges, as we like to call them, for both RyQ and rubric scores. These gauges should generally be in similar positions. In the example shown here, the rubric score looks to be a bit higher than the RyQ score. However, when we look at the progress monitoring chart to the right, we can see first that his RyQ scores are trending up, which is the most important thing but also that his RyQ scores are trending towards the 80th plus percentile for students his age. Those are both very encouraging signs. The real power of the RyQ scores I mentioned earlier is in tracking the trend data, not overanalyzing the individual points. Below those fuel gauges are average metrics for word count, vocabulary age, pace, and accuracy percentage. It's useful to look at those numbers to see overall how much writing your students are doing and how long it's taking them. The vocabulary age should generally be between the ages of 9 and 12, as we learn most of our words by the time we're 12. What would be notable here is if, for example, an older student was consistently scoring in the lower part of that range or even outside of it. For emerging writers, they can use the vocabulary age to set goals. For example, they may start the year in the 8 to 9 year old range, but work their way up to 10 or 11. We've heard stories of ELL students doing just that and taking great satisfaction in being able to see quantifiable improvement. Below the averages is a history of scored docs with all of the data in RyQ scores. Each of the document titles is a hyperlink back to the original document. It's important to note that in the progress monitoring chart, there are national norms for RyQ score and vocab age, and though there are no norms for accuracy percentage, you can still monitor student progress for the dates chosen in the calendar in the upper right. Norms can also be toggled on and off with the switch. The last piece of the dashboard that will be especially useful for teachers working from home is the ability to create and share custom rubrics. Clicking Rubrics in the left side panel brings you to the Rubrics home screen where you see an alphabetical list of the rubrics you have created. To create another rubric, click on the Create Rubrics button. Add and subtract columns and rows as needed and fill in the points and criteria. After you save the rubric, it will appear in the list on the home screen and can easily be shared with other teachers by clicking the three dot menu on the right and copying the URL that is created. Finally. Let's go back to the original document and take a look at the student experience. This time, when we open the sidebar, we're going to click I am a student in the extension menu. The RyQ student experience mixes a little bit of nudge psychology and a little bit of gamification with the idea that by simply getting students to write more, write more words, write more often, that ultimately will lead them to write better. By tracking student writing bursts, a measure of writing fluency, or how much a student can write before pausing for two seconds or more, and by rewarding them for writing more words and longer bursts, we can nudge them into better writing. As I begin to type, you will see the RyQ meter start to go up. The RyQ meter itself will display the student's best and total number of bursts for that day right on the front screen. Please note, for students who might be distracted by the meter, it can easily be minimized. It will also track the number of academic keywords typed and group them by subject, as you'll see in the expanded extension. 
These keywords include topics in math, science, and English. When we maximize the extension, we can see the gauge for average burst length in proportion to the best burst, as well as total number of bursts in keywords broken down by subject area. Students, and soon teachers too, will be able to see their burst statistics for week, month, and year also. Just seeing the amount of writing they've done can inspire students to think about all that work and to keep going to reach loftier goals. To help them even more with that is a program of badges and achievements that can be accessed in the Achievements option in the menu. Badges can be earned for burst length, subject words, and total words typed. There is a unique opportunity here for teachers of distant or remote learners, as you can give students writing prompts and other assignments with the real goal of increasing their badges and achievements. When you are able to get back to the classroom, you will have instant understanding of the work your students put in and the progress they made. Finally, in the feedback section, students can see a more complete picture of your assessment. For students using the student experience of RIQ, teachers will not have to insert the feedback image. Rather, students can go here and see all of the feedback and data and get a more complete understanding of the rubric by seeing the criteria not only for the level they have achieved, but also what to work on for improvement.